patient is a semi-four-year-old woman who we got consulted for evaluation of dizziness as well as right upper extremity pain or exertion. Her history is significant for recurrent episodes of right eye vision loss, which results spontaneously lasting about five, one to five minutes. Her passage of history is not contributory, and of note, she is an active smoker. She is on aspirin as well as cholesterol therapy. Her ex physical exam is largely unremarkable, except for diminished right radial pulse. Her CTA neck, which is shown here, revealed severe brachycephalic artery osteostenosis as well as bovine arch anatomy. Of note, patient was, did not have any significant ICA stenosis. Here's another view of her CTA neck showing severe in the brachycephalic artery stenosis as well as bovine arch anatomy. We started our procedure by gaining the access in the right common femoral artery with micropuncture system and upsizing it to a six French sheath. Ascending thoracic aorta was then catheterized and an aerogram was then performed. This confirmed our finding of the severe stenosis at the origin of the innominate artery. At that point, there were two anatomic challenges to consider. First, the bovine aortic arch with a common origin for both the brachycephalic artery and the left common carotid artery required the placement of a stent with utmost precision to avoid coverage or jailing of the left common carotid artery. Secondly, due to arch anatomy, placing the tip of the sheath at the bovine origin would cause the sheath to be pointing down, making it difficult to cannulate the innominate artery. With our wire in the ascending aorta, we use a soft Simmons II catheter to catheterize the left common carotid artery. We then exchange for a stiff wire and an eight French sheath was extended into the left common carotid artery. Catheterization of the left common carotid artery was then confirmed with angiography. The sheath was then pulled back into the arch and its position was confirmed with angiography. The stiff wire was then maintained in the left carotid artery to hold the sheath in place pointing in the direction of the brachycephalic artery. An eight French sheath was necessary to allow the size big enough to accommodate the stiff wire and stent at the same time. A 018 body wire was then extended into brachycephalic artery and used to select right common carotid artery. Its position was confirmed with angiography. We intended to place a carotid filter for distal bulk protection. However, because of the stiff wire in the sheath, the tip of the filter wire repeatedly crumbled as we tried to advance it through the sheath. We tried to place the filter twice without success. Due to severe stenosis, predilation was performed with a 4 mm balloon to minimize the risk of dislodging of the stent off of delivery balloon by the stenosis. A small balloon was selected to minimize plaque disruption that may cause embolization and stroke. After confirming the positioning of the balloon with angiography, it was deployed. Next, a 7 by 15 mm express stand was placed in position, confirmed by angiography, and deployed. Usually, a PTFE covered balloon expandable stand is preferred. However, this patient has a common origin for both the brachycephalic artery and the left common carotid artery. Thus, an uncovered stent was chosen. Completion in geography from multiple angles showed a good position of the stent with minimal residual stenosis. Patient awoke from the procedure neurologically intact. She was admitted to ICU for close monitoring. She was subsequently discharged home on possibly one without any issues.